All right, we're recording. Welcome. I'll call the Moorhead Public Housing Agency board meeting of April 27, 2021 to order. I'm Greg Lemke, the board chair. If others would introduce themselves. Alexa Dixon Greg, secretary. Ahmed Issa, board member. Shelly Dalku, City Council Liaison. Hi, this is Don Bacon. I'm the Executive Director, and I have Tony Vondal, our Housing Manager, in the office with me today. All right, are there any agenda amendments? I have no amendments. Any citizens to be heard at this time? Not at this time. Okay, and our first uh, item is approval of minutes. Request board approval of the March 23rd, 2021 meeting minutes. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve the minutes. Um, Ed, I can't make motions or second. So if you, you, you and Alexa today. Ahmad, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay. Would you make a second, second on that motion? Sure. Okay. So we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The next item is request approval for payment of bills. Um, nothing really out of the ordinary on payment of bills. We do have one um, payment that was made in our public housing program, we call it the pilot payment that stands for payment in lieu of taxes. And that's just a once a year payment. So that was made on this um, cycle of, of payments. Um, other than that, nothing unusual to report. Okay, any questions for Don on the bills? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve. I'll move to approve the payment of bills. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we move on to business and it's request approval of Bridges Grant Agreement with Minnesota Housing Finance Agency. So as a board, you just um, approved payment of bills and the next three business items are about revenue. So that's a good news. Good news. Um, this first one is the Bridges Rental Assistance Program. I'm very pleased to report that our competitive application was selected by the Minnesota Housing Finance Agency at their board meeting last week. Um, and I think that's a real testament to the work that our staff does to administer that program um, in a very quality way. Um, they definitely look at past performance um, in the application process. So we will be awarded a contract of $301,440 over the next biennium. Um, it runs along the Minnesota state fiscal cycle. So starting July 1st is when our contract will be implemented and it'll run for two years. Um, and this is a rental assistance program that mirrors Section 8, and it's specifically for people with serious mental illness who are leaving treatment settings or other kinds of segregated settings where if they didn't have access to a housing voucher, they would be discharged directly into homelessness. Um, and then we work with them to transition to the Section 8 program, which is a federally funded program. But unfortunately, there's long waiting lists or closed waiting lists for Section 8. So this is the state of Minnesota investing in um, access for people to have housing. Um, and this program is very similar to the BCOW Bridges program. Um, that's just funded through the local counties. And then we operate this program funded through the state. So that's just a little background about the program. But I included. Um, you know, a resolution that I will follow up if it passes today, um, which I assume it will, I'll follow up with Greg to Great. sign and I'll be submitting that um, as part of our due diligence process to get that contract 
um, up and going with the state. And then I did include in the board packet, just so you could see what was in the Minnesota Housing Finance Agency board packet about the overall program across the state and all of the different awards and award amounts. You can see all that background as well. Okay, now yeah, that's great news. Yep. Any yep. questions for Don? Do we know where the housing is going to be or is it just scattered? Yes, so this is a voucher program. So we rely on the private rental market um, in terms of where the housing is. So again, it's very similar to Section 8 where someone has a voucher and then they look around for housing. Um, we do inspections to make sure that it meets quality standards. Um, and we have a number of parameters around what they look for, but they really, they lease up and we then we cut um, housing assistance checks to a number of landlords throughout Moorhead and and also this program is available to people across Becker Clay Ottertail and Wilkin counties so it coincides with our adult mental health adult initiative health. Um, group um, of, counties. of counties. Does this program have the same um, insurance for the renters? I know I have a neighbor who does rent out and he does take people that aren't usually accepted other places and he did have um one, one with mental illness that had done a lot of damage and um they never told him i think it was through cap lp help facilitate it but there is this insurance program so if there is damage to the property that it's covered but they never told him that that was available do you know if there's this kind of insurance available with this program? Yeah, that's a great question. And so the program you're referring to is called the Landlord Risk Mitigation Program, and that's administered through the um, Fargo-Moorhead um, Coalition to End Homelessness. It's an awesome program, um, and we do promote it as much as we can. Um, it's only available in the Fargo-Moorhead area. There is some opportunities with Minnesota Housing, they're looking at similar kinds of risk programs, and there will be a webinar, I think, next week about that. So that would provide an option for people either outside the Fargo-Moorhead area or if there's, you know, all the funding is used up, because that does happen sometimes where um, it's used up for the Fargo-Moorhead current program and they have to put the brakes on things. Um, but yeah, it's a great program where if somebody has a uh, bad rental history, um, it's a way where a landlord can submit a claim um, and, and they haven't had to have many claims. So that's good news too, but it's there to provide some peace of mind for landlords. Hey Don, quick question, another question. Uh, is, I know this covers section eight vouchers uh, and, and the, rent, the rental units have increased the last two or three years. Uh, for like a three bedroom, I know the section eight limit is like 1200. Uh, if you go around Moorhead area, it's so hard to find a three bedroom with 1200. So is that going to help this? Is this uh, going to help like kind of rental limit increased a little bit like like 1300 or 1400 for a three bedroom? Or it's pretty much going to stay the same or that's a great question. So you're talking about the payment standards and we do follow the, the same payment standards that are adopted for the Section 8 program in that jurisdiction. So um, right now, if someone were to lease up in a three bedroom, they would be um, having to work with that $1,200 because that's the payment standard that Clay County HRA uses, which operates the rental assistance program in this area. Um, it should, I would think, maybe increase with the new fair market rents coming out um, for the next year. Um, but it, it, it depends on the housing authority looking at what their experience is and what's happening in that specific rental market. I think they can go, there's some parameters around um, how above or below they can go around that fair market rent amount. So short answer, no, we, we follow those same um, payment standards, but that's good feedback to hear. And I can definitely pass that feedback along. Any other questions for Don? 
hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve. A second. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is request approval for 2021 capital fund program amendment to the ACC. So the ACC uh, pop quiz in public housing world <laughs> that stands for um, annual contributions contract. So that's like our contract with HUD um, to to provide the services we provide. And so this is our 2021 capital funding grant award amount, and it's higher than usual. So that is very good news. We could definitely use this funding. Um, and I didn't do a memo um, for all of you. I just included the actual ACC amendment that following the board approval, I will sign and submit to HUD. And then there'll be some additional steps the board will need to take before we spend any of this money. And that will occur at our next meeting in May with our public hearing because we need to basically have the board approve what are the things that we can spend this money on, which is our next five year plan. But you can see the ACC amendment here for 361,974. I think our last 2020 grant was more around 295. Um, so it's a definite, um, it's definitely good news to see this number. Don, do you know, I just, and uh, I don't want to question when you're getting more money, but it's, it's more money from a federal program makes me a little nervous. Are there new stipulations? Are there, have you heard anything? Why? Is there new formulas? What? The formulas are always hard to describe. I've certainly gone to trainings on them. They, I will tell you there is a lot to the formulas. Um, Certainly, I can say in a very basic way that if you were like scored as a troubled agency, that would start hurting your award allocations and we're not troubled. Um, hopefully we'll be high performers soon, but we're we're performing well in terms of our audit reports, our occupancy levels that we're spending our capital funding grants in a timely manner if we let those lag for a long time. So all of those things could reduce your award amount. But aside from that, it really is a year to year decision by Congress about how much they're going to appropriate um, for the public housing program. And then HUD has to figure out how to split up that big pie with their pie formulas. Pie. So, you know, the good news is we're seeing this big increase, but it, it, it does connect to the broader conversation we have about public housing, which is it's a very difficult program to plan for because we never know you know there's ups and then there's downs the overall trend is down um you know i think the capital funding grant program has been better in in probably the last three years but the overall trend has been down so you know that makes it challenging because we're always having to look year to year what is it going to be What's the number? Whereas other kinds of affordable housing programs have a lot more stability um, and predictability in how the funding works. Sure. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I don't want to question if we're getting more, but just curious. So. But no like major new strings attached. I mean, really it's the same. There's plenty of regulations that we have to follow <laughs> in signing this ACC, but it's really by and large the same as it has been in years past. Okay. Any other questions for Don? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I so move. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is request approval for the fiscal year. 2020 Ross Grant Award. More good news. I know, and I'm so happy to share this. And I did send a quick email to the board because I couldn't wait, but formally sharing that we did get renewed for the Ross Grant for the next three years. This is a three year grant cycle, and that allows our agency to employ a service coordinator who is based out of both Riverview Heights and Sharpview. And she's able to connect with a lot of our residents um, to help them 
um, connect to a wide range of different support to meet their goals, to age in place successfully, stay healthy, find jobs, um, increase self-sufficiency. It's just an amazing program, and I'm so happy that we can continue to offer it um, at Moorhead Public Housing. Um, and so I put the amounts in. Um, I am disputing with HUD the amount of points we got on our application, even though it doesn't matter. Either way, we're awarded, but um, they're saying we turned in a report late back in October of 2018 and got docked five points for it, but I have documentation showing otherwise. So <laughs> for the record, I am talking to them about that. And if I am correct, we would have only lost one point in our competitive application, which is really amazing. So uh, we're really proud of the work that we've done over the last few years with the Ross grant. Any questions? Okay, it's great news, yeah. And uh, thanks for keeping such detailed records. It's important <laughs> to be accurate. So um, I'll entertain a motion for request approval for the Ross grant award. Yeah, I move approval on the Ross Grant report. I will happily second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So we are on to other business. Review of items under public comment period. Okay, so this item doesn't require any board action today, but we will have board action at our May 25th meeting. So make sure you have that on your calendar. That's a very important meeting. Um, it's, um, we'll start with the public hearing and then we'll move into the board meeting. Um, so every year we put, we review all of our public housing policies. Um, normally we do this in February, but this year we delayed it a little bit to May in order to provide better accessibility for our resident advisory council meetings um, and our public hearing given the COVID pandemic. So I just put together this memo outlining what we have out for public comment right now. We're in a 45 day public comment period. So the public can come into our office at 800 2nd Avenue North in Moorhead and review these documents. Um, they are many of them quite large documents, so I did not attach them or include them in the board packet, um, but I will be following up with an email to the board with all of the documents attached, so hopefully I don't crash your email, but that will give you the opportunity to, re to review those prior to voting on them. Um, so you'll see this memo is just simply a summary of what's ahead, so the capital funding grant five-year plan um, all of the items that we could potentially spend money on over the next five years. We may not be able to afford all of these items um, because of what we just discussed, that we don't know our award amounts after 2021. So we always put in a few more than, you know, just to give us some flexibility. Um, and then, and, and I will just say many of those items really came out of the physical needs assessment that was done in 2019. And then lots of conversations with our maintenance supervisor and our maintenance technician staff and other staff about what needs were seen and talking to residents as well. And then in terms of public housing policies, the really big changes are ACOP, our admissions and continued occupancy policy. I with the board that we did contract with Nan McKay and Associates, which is a respected national organization that provides training and technical assistance to public housing agencies. And they have a model ACOP that you can pay for. Um, Clay County HRA has the model admin plan for the Section 8 program. So this is kind of the sister to that for the public housing program. Um, and the benefit of using this ACOP um, as opposed to the one we have been using for many years, is it really covers a lot more information. So right now, um, if a more unusual situation came up, um, something we don't see every day, we would have to go do a lot of independent research of the regulation and find out, you know, making sure that we follow all the rules. Th this new ACOP has everything that you really need right in it. So it just provides staff with a lot better direction, um, which helps with consistency because, of course, we need to make sure we um, that we 
use our policies the same way across different people. Um, so there's a description there. So no major changes in terms of like the content of the policy, but it just is a whole different format and it's a lot longer. <laughs> it's about 400 pages. Oh, wow. Um, and, and then we did make some changes to the lease agreement and tenant charges just to coincide with some things in the ACOP. Um, an example is um, how we administer late fees um, and the cycle that that's on. Um, we we um, made some adjustments to be more solidly in line with the regulation about notices and appeal rights. So we just have to make sure if we make any changes in that ACOP that all of the language across our documents says the same thing and we don't have any contradictions. Same thing with the house rules. Um, the other thing I'll just say about next month is you will have an opportunity as the board to either attend in person or remotely. Um, we will be meeting at the Young Comp Center Auditorium. That's where the city council has been meeting. Um, the public can attend either in person or by phone. Um, they can also submit written comments in advance that I can bring to the board. Um, and I'll be reaching out to the to you to ask for you to let me know what your plan is um, next month, just so I can know what to expect in terms of um, in-person or virtual attendance. Any questions about next month? Don, you mentioned changes to the fees or how the fees are administered. Um, to residents, are they more friendly to the residents, the same or less friendly? They're more friendly. Okay, very good. So, um, I'm trying to think of an example. It, it kind of gets into like before we would do a combination if somebody was continually late on their rent. Um, we do a combination lease termination and um, implement a late fee in the same notice. And we're not going to continue to do that because the clock in terms of appeal rights is different for those two different issues. And that's all laid out very clearly in the ACOP. And so it'd be two separate notices. Um, and we're also changing when we apply the late charge. And really, these changes are more friendly more to the friendly. residents. Okay, thank you. And I should say, Tony and I, we got this, you know, information from Nam McKay, but we actually talked with a consultant for almost, for almost three, three days three over Zoom, Zoom and went oh. through the whole thing. So that was really helpful too, just to get an outside expert and perspective to talk through how we're running the program, what enhancements we can make. So that was a good benefit. Good. So the next item looks like it's POHP loan application. Yes, so I submitted this yesterday. So I just laid out in the memo um, all of the information um, we discussed this previously in another board meeting um, in terms of leverage amounts. Um, our leverage ended up coming out at about 29% of the overall project cost, which I think is a good place to be. Um, and we're asking for all new windows at the high rise. So it's a big project um, and hopefully we'll get funded. We will hear, um, they believe they'll be making announcements in late July about that. And that's through Minnesota Housing Finance Agency. Okay. okay. Any questions about that? If not, then litigation update. This is more good news, but still not a done deal. Um, and we've been talking about this for quite a while. Um, I haven't mentioned it in a while, but several years ago, HUD took money from a number of housing authorities basically saying you have too many reserves built up you don't need them so we're not gonna award you an operating grant for the year 
Um, Moorhead Public Housing lost a significant amount of money from that. And there was a lawsuit that Moorhead Public Housing did not enter in the first wave that was successful. And then they, they opened up a second wave and we did enter that. And it's been moving quite slowly, um, I think par partially due to the pandemic. Um, but I just included for the board to see the update from the attorney on that. And we're in this with a number of housing authorities across the country, but the rulings continue to be in the favor of the housing authorities. And um, so we'll continue to follow it, but this is just an opportunity for some additional funding to address, you know, unmet needs of the agency. That's good. Any questions about that? If not, then executive director updates. I will be brief um, on Maple Court townhomes that is moving through committees through the Minnesota Housing Finance Agency. Um, we did hit a little bit of a bump, but I think we're over it where um, there were some questions about, you know, the 0% loan and how they were looking at that. And, and we provided a lot of follow up information about the value of the property, all of the hard work that we've done to you know, analyze that. And I, I think I think we're in a good position. Um, it'll be going to another committee next week on Wednesday. Um, we did learn through Minnesota Housing that we will have to establish an independent LLC to operate Maple Court. Um, I do wish they would have mentioned this to us earlier, <laughs> but they didn't. Um, I talked with um, Dara, the executive director with Clay County HRA. She said that is quite common. They have a program that they might be um, getting funding through Minnesota Housing Forward. They will also have to establish a different LLC. Um, so I'm not taking any steps right now. Uh, I want to kind of see, get the process through. And I think we can establish one fairly quickly because we have all the experience from the Moorhead Affordable Housing LLC. Um, so I think we can. Uh, move through that process pretty expeditiously. On the Section 18 repositioning application, um, we did get the tenant protection vouchers approved through HUD. We just heard that maybe a few days ago, so that's really significant. That had to happen in order for us to proceed, and all indicators were that it would be approved, but it's good to have all that confirmation. So Tony and another staff with Clay County HRA are currently setting up individual appointments with um, residents to brief them on the Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program um, and help them um, transition to that program, the goal being um, that being effective July 1. So as of July 1, people in the scattered site locations um, their landlord would be the Moorhead Affordable Housing LLC. We would no longer be administering a housing subsidy. Um, Clay County HRA would be administering the housing subsidy. So that's moving along. Um, and then the last update was just the Sharpview roof replacement. Um, that is going, um, we're having a bid opening this Thursday. Um, and so okay. my plan is to proceed with the lowest responsive and responsible bidder. That does fit with our policy, but I did want to just double check with the board because whenever I can, I have the board approve um, our selected bidders, but sometimes the timing doesn't work out. And, and right now with COVID, um, there is a bit of a backup with material orders and manufacturing where I wouldn't want to delay getting, getting the order in with our selected contractor. So, you know, unless anyone has concerns about that, we will do the bid opening on Thursday and then work with our consultant, um, the architect, um, to review all of the proposals and select the lowest, again, responsive and responsible bidder. Any concerns with that? Okay. And I Those just are have my one... updates. Yep. Okay, I just have one quick question also. How is it going with um, at Sharpview and the high rise with getting people at least access or helping them get access to the vaccine? Since it seems most places now there's more vaccine than there are people that want it. But. 
Yes, we have definitely noticed a shift from trying to get people in to now people coming to us and saying, do you need help with getting people vaccinated? Um, I meant to bring our number because we do have a number from our service coordinator on how many people we've assisted with getting vaccinated. Um, but we have assisted several people, like bringing people over to the YomComp Center, setting up appointments. Um, we have a contact with Clay County Public Health. She's right in my cell phone and she'll call me last minute if they have you know, something that's about to run out and find out someone over there. All of that said, now they have approached us about would we want to set up an on site clinic in a building? Um, and we did conduct a survey with residents because we weren't able to give public health enough information for them to decide whether it's worth it for them or not because we can't predict what people are going to do. So we did administer a survey where we handed um, paper surveys to every. Um, every unit and we did get quite a bit back. Many people said they were vaccinated um, and we didn't have a lot of people say that they wanted an on-site vaccine. So we're not gonna be doing an on-site vaccination clinic. So we will continue to you know, put flyers up about, do you need assistance getting vaccinated? Do you need information? Do you have questions about getting vaccinated? And just remaining available for that um, as much as we can. Good, good to hear. All right, there's no attorney's report. So, and we do have another meeting right after this, correct? So correct. We'll, adjourn, we'll adjourn this meeting. I, I have one thing that okay. is a request from Joseph Lindstrom at the National Low Income, Low -income Housing Income. Coalition. And um, Joseph is their uh, field organizer. And he, I used to work with the NLIHC quite extensively when I worked on the North Dakota side. And he asked me if some members of our board would be willing to meet with our um, Minnesota federal representative from our area. Um, Colin Peterson's replacement. I, I'm sorry, I'm mental blocking on her name right now. Um, Michelle Fishbach. Yeah, 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 right. It, to discuss the National Low Income Housing Coalition um, um, policy platform, which is very uh, friendly towards public housing and um, our issues, um, I would suggest you know, before we respond that that the board go to their website and look at it specifically. But he's requesting that a couple of us and, and I would. Uh, I would be willing to do this, but 2 or 3 of us meet with her to discuss. Um, their policy platform. In hopes of swaying her at least on on a few issues um and and so you know before we respond to joey i i, I would suggest that um, all of you go to their it's nlihc.org nlihc.org and look at their policy agenda they are extremely data-driven organizations and probably the most effective housing organization when it comes to low income housing issues in the country. And I have been affiliated with them for probably close to 10 years. And um, I would be very pleased if a couple of you would volunteer to accompany me to, to uh, try to set up a meeting and see if we can get some traction. Michael, is that something that would be virtual or when they say set up a meeting? I mean, I, I don't know if she has oh, an office here or. Yeah, well, I'm hoping she has an office somewhere, <laughs> somewhere in our area that would be reasonable distance for us to travel, but um, virtual if need be. Sure. And would Don be included on that or is that not, would that just be board members or? Um, board members was his request. Okay. I think Don would have more limits than we would have as sure. board members. Okay. 
if anybody's interested, let Michael know, you know, look up, check that website out. And then do you have any idea of a timing, Michael, or is that totally up? I think as soon as we could uh, organize something. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. All right. So the regular meeting is adjourned. So now we will start the more affordable housing LLC meeting of Tuesday, April 27th, 2021. Um, just do a quick, I'll, I'll just, we did a roll, roll call. We have four members here, so we have a quorum. Um, is there any agenda amendments or just no in amendments. front of us? Okay. So the first item is approval of the December 15th, 2020 meeting minutes. Any questions on the minutes? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. I will make a motion to approve. I second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is appro approval of Morehead Affordable Housing LLC bylaws. So I am sorry to do things a little backwards, but we weren't able to get the bylaws done prior to having that December meeting. I've been told that's okay by our attorneys, but formally adopting bylaws, um, just to really clarify, it's not a requirement of an LLC, but it really spells out the parameters for the LLC. Um, many LLCs will have something else, um, but because we're more of a um, public entity, we thought bylaws made more sense. So I worked with our um, attorneys and they proposed these bylaws. Hopefully you've had a chance to look at them. Um, we will also be voting shortly on officers and board members um, I just want to point out that these bylaws say um, at least three directors, but we can have more. So we just kind of kept that general language. Um, again, I think just having the MPHA board and the LLC board be the same makes the most sense um, and just having uniformity there. Um, we will only meet once a year unless we need to meet more often. Um, and as we're getting the LLC up and going in preparation for the repositioning work, um, that's why you're seeing a couple more LLC meetings here. Any questions on the bylaws, comments? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, Morad Affordable Housing LLC bylaws. I will move to approve the bylaws. Okay, we have a motion. A second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is the approval of LLC board and officers. So on this one, um, certainly if you want to have further discussion about other options, you can, but I think a simple way forward could be to, for someone to make a motion um, for the same board and officers as the Moorhead Public Housing Agency. That's certainly um, a way that we could proceed. But again, the board can discuss that. What's the pleasure of the, the board? Anybody want to make a Motion or discussion about changing it or what's what's your wishes? It makes sense to me, so I will make a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. I just have a quick question about, we're short on our board one of the, um, a tenant would they just whoever is put put in that spot just fall in 
to this board or is it would they have to be voted in or how what would the I you know that's a good question I think it might depend on how you formulate the motion so if you say that you would want it to include the current vacancy as well um to be clear and of course you know I would I would suggest that because we wouldn't want to have a new person join and be the one person odd man out sort of situation so right it may good to it may be good to stipulate that in your in your vote that hopefully we will be um successfully able to recruit a resident commissioner and then that person could also serve on the llc as well is that okay with uh, alexa who made the motion yeah i'm gonna i'll amend that just to include um all positions including any vacancies Ahmed, is that okay with you as you made this that, second? That, that, that's, that's good, fine with me. More than a second. All right, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So the final item is approval of Mord Public Housing Agency be, a, be the authorized agent to manage all day to day functions of the Mored Affordable Housing LLC. That's a mouthful. It is. Um, so this last vote is simply to be crystal clear and this w does allow the llc to only meet once a year because what we would do is the llc is telling mpha you manage the day-to-day -day functions so at every single monthly mpha board meeting i will include as a department um, all the financials for the llc the mpha can review that on a monthly basis um, it would be incorporated in our accounting um, really treated as a department. Um, but then once a year, we do have that process of the annual meeting to review specifically the, the LLC. Um, so this just makes it clear that, um, you know, as we begin to operate the LLC, that we have um, more at public housing agency on a day-to-day -day basis and the executive director are, are, are managing those operations. Okay, any questions, comments? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve Mord Public Housing Agency to be the managing agent of all functions of the LLC. A second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Is there any other business? No other business. All right. With that, we'll adjourn this meeting also and see everybody hopefully in, in May, in person maybe. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.